My name is Haley Holtz. I'm one of the enrollment counselors here at the seminary. Uh, really happy to see some of you that I've already met and excited to connect with those of you that I haven't yet. Um, but we are really excited that you guys uh, wanted to join us today for a little bit. We would love to share about the seminary, hopefully answer questions that you have. So we're going to go ahead and get started with Dr. Hogg. Um, if you have questions that come up while we're talking, you can throw them in the chat and we'll make sure to address them uh, later on during the call. So Dr. Hogg, I'm going to kick it over to you. would love for you to introduce yourself and then um, just go ahead and give a pitch about why seminary and why Phoenix Seminary specifically. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm David Hogg. I'm the interim president here at Phoenix Seminary, and I'm thrilled that all of you are thinking uh, in different ways about further theological education or further education uh, in Bible and theology. Um, I think that's important. I think it's necessary regardless of where it is that you're, you think you're headed, where you think God might be calling you. Uh, in fact, as I reflect on, on uh, the, the question, why would anyone go to seminary at all? So starting on broad level, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Phoenix Seminary. Why would anyone go to seminary at all? Um, of course, if, if you think about it, if you're going to train for anything significant uh, in in life, it's going to take time, it's going to take energy, it's going to take commitment. So, you know, I think of, of friends of mine who are doctors. They did not become doctors after you know a, a crash course over six months and and then decide that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe be a surgeon. You know, they, it took them years uh, to get their their MD, and then it took more years of residency and more years of specialty, depending on what they wanted to do. Same thing is true of law. You know, it takes three-ish year, three years to get a law degree, maybe a little bit longer. Um, and then there's specialties beyond that. Same thing is true of teaching. Uh, you have to go through, you, generally speaking, you have to go through teacher's college. And then there's years of figuring out how that works under um, under uh, a mentor and so forth. And then, um, you know, as I was thinking about it, my youngest son is thinking about auto mechanics as a career. And it's fascinating for him to learn, oh, there's years of figuring out how to get certified for this, that the others. So in other words, if you're going to do something well for the rest of your life, then of course, it's going to take a lot of time and energy and investment. And that's no less true um, for engaging in what we at Phoenix Seminary like to call a lifetime of faithful ministry. If you're going to be engaged in any kind of ministry, whether it's as a senior pastor, whether it's as a uh, pastor of administration, what we usually call an executive pastor, or whether it's uh, being a, a Bible study leader, a small group leader, uh, any, anything along those lines, some some other member of staff at a church, you know, there's it's it's important to get trained well so that you can carry on a lifetime of faithful ministry. And of course, in our day and age, with the culture that we have, uh, things are as you can appreciate. I think we can all appreciate things aren't getting easier in a certain sense. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, here in the states and in the, the West at large. I mean, the, the whole point, the whole question of gender confusion. I don't know about you. I was raised thinking that there's a man and a woman, and that's pretty much it. And uh, of course, now we have all kinds of things going on. And and so, you know, it's important to, to learn how can I think not first of all, how can I think biblically about this? Um, how can I put together a biblical worldview that that so it's all part in, of how I think and live? And then how can I compassionately, helpfully, thoughtfully? Uh, engage people who who uh, who take a, a different view than what the Bible outlines. Um, we have different positions on social justice. It's again, it's a question of of thinking carefully through Scripture. What is it that Scripture says? How do I apply this? How do I have the mind of Christ? How am I going to be able to to move forward in this? And of course, we also know just as a third example. Uh, politics in this country is not getting any easier. Uh, you know, there's uh, increased polarization. No surprise there. I'm not saying anything we don't already know, but um, you know, how do we navigate that? How do you navigate that as a as a as a potential potentially as a staff member on a church? How do you navigate that if you're in a small group or a small a Bible study? Uh, how, quite frankly, how do you navigate these questions with just fellow believers? Uh, and so these are the things that matter, I think, in terms of preparing for a lifetime of faithful ministry. So that's why. That's why I think seminary is one of the reasons I think seminary is, is so important to begin with. But why Phoenix Seminary in particular? There are uh, lots of, of seminary choices out there. Absolutely. Obviously, I'm going to tell you Phoenix Seminary is the best choice. Uh, that's that's a given. But there are other really great seminaries. I will not name them, but I, I know they're out there. I have friends. In fact, this conference I'm at is called the Evangelical Theological Society. 
and I was just talking, in fact, with the uh, with the president of uh, another seminary, and he's doing his seminary is doing well. It's in a completely different part of the country. I've met up with some others who are teaching at other places. So there are a lot of good seminaries, but there are some things that make Phoenix Seminary, I think, uh, rather distinctive. First of all, the faculty. Our faculty is, we have a, a relatively small faculty, which is good because we have a relatively, I say relatively small school. We have about 320 students, which believe it or not in the United States means we're in the top 10% of largest seminaries in America. Most seminaries are much smaller than we are. Uh, there are a few that are, of course, the really huge ones, but uh, but we're actually a decent size. But our faculty are uh, incredible in a, in a number of ways. First of all, they, are, I say this all the time, they're award winners. Last year, we had three out of our six uh, residential faculty, full-time faculty, won awards for their books. And that's, I mean, no other seminary can say that 50% of their, their faculty in one year won awards for their books. So there's, you know, there's that. And uh, and they're 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 winning. The, the, it's interesting the kinds of books that are winning the awards. They're basically two types. There's the one that's far more scholarly and academic, the kind of thing that you're not going to read as you're falling asleep. Um, it's just not gonna it's not gonna sit, you know get anywhere. But there's also the the other uh, kind of book that uh, our faculty like to write are the books that are helpful for the church at large, for people who are in the pews, as it were. I don't know if we have pews anymore. People in the chairs, people in the whatever we have. They're 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 wrestling with questions like, how did we get the Bible? Why is the Bible the way it is? Uh, how do I talk to somebody who's an unbeliever about the word of God and its, and its uh, authenticity and its sufficiency and these sorts of things? So having a faculty that are writing in, in those areas is, is, uh, and doing so well in it is really great. The other thing about our faculty, because we're a smaller uh, group, we have faculty who are intentional about being engaged with students. Uh, just to give you one example, we have developed this semester a, a schedule for on-campus uh, students where there's a dinner hour, pretty much. Uh, it lasts for about 40, 45 minutes, so it's more it's not quite a dinner hour, but you get the idea. And we, once a month, you can do that, we have that every day of the week, but once a month we offer a free dinner to anyone in the community who wants to come, the staff, students, faculty. And they gather together, gather together, and it's been a great opportunity to see faculty and students sitting around tables, enjoying conversation. Not always conversation that's academic. Sometimes it's just conversation about life and what's going on. And and I love watching that and seeing our faculty have an opportunity to meet students in a in a context outside the classroom, and for our students to be able to get to know, oh, professors are real people, and you know they also have uh, children, and they also struggle with things, and they also you know go to the you know various churches. So it's it's been a really great opportunity to just see how the the community has has coalesced around that. So our faculty are, I think, the first reason why you would come to Phoenix Seminary. They're they're scholars in their own right. They they care about the church deeply and and serving the church, and they love to invest in students. Second reason to come to Phoenix Seminary is the curriculum. We are very intentional about our curriculum following what, in what I would call the historic Orthodox tradition, meaning that for century upon century upon century, there are four categories that in theological education have always been covered, and they are the biblical, theological, historical, and practical. And it's, it's important to us that we keep those uh, first and foremost. There, there are some schools around the country that have changed their curriculum in order to serve what they see as, as present day modern cultural questions. And so they're changing their curriculum to match the culture. We're not interested in changing our curriculum to match the culture. We're interested in teaching people the word of God so that they know how to engage the culture no matter where they may be. So if you can think of it this way, if I can give you a little analogy, at seminary, our job is to give you a tool belt and then fill it with tools that you can use for the rest of, of your ministry. We do not give you a prefabricated house, if I can use that as sort of a carpentry example. We don't give you a prefabricated way of doing ministry. We don't give you a prefab way in which you can say, well, this is how you, this is how you would plant a church. This is how you'd pastor, like it's just preset, just go do the same thing over and over. We prefer to give you the tools that you need to dig into the word of God, to continue to feed yourself on the word of God, to teach others the word of God, to think holistically about putting all of scripture together. That's the theological discipline. 
to know that you are standing in a tradition of orthodoxy. So you're not wondering, am I out here on my own saying this? Culture, the cultural may want to tell you, oh, no, that's new. You've never, you know, church doesn't know what it's talking about. And you will have taken some church history classes and know, no, it's in the Bible. It's theologically accurate. And we've been saying this for 2000 years. So no, this is not new. Um, so that's our that's our curriculum. That's what we designed to do. We desire to, to make sure that you have you have what you need and you are equipped for a lifetime of, of faithful ministry. So faculty curriculum, and then third, uh, one of the uh, the mottos we have for the school is scholarship with a shepherd's heart. You'll see that on the web page. You'll see that in some of our other uh, information, social media, and so forth. But we keep talking about scholarship with a shepherd's heart, and that's really what we're trying to do at Phoenix Seminary. Is we want to take the truth of God's word and it, the study of God's word. That's the scholarship piece. And we want to, but we don't want to do that apart from recognizing the practical needs of the church and ministry and, and living the Christian life. And that's the shepherd's heart piece. So we're always struggling to put these two things together and striving to put these two things together. Um, so on the one hand, the scholarship side, I'll tell you straight up, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You come here, you will read a lot of books. So brace yourself, buckle in, get your helmet on. You're going, you're, you will study. Uh, but it's amazing to me how, you know, the first semester of when we have new students, about week two or three, students will begin to say, oh, I have no idea. There's a lot of there's a lot of writing here. There's a lot of a lot of reading here. And I've got papers to do. They say, yes, we told you, but don't worry. Keep at it. Keep at it. And 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 you know, pacing yourself is important. When, when students do that, there's a sort of a hump they get over on the other side. And then they realize, oh, this is so good. And they begin to to to, you know, they learn how to pace themselves and and get in the flow. In fact, this semester, um, I was asking a student. As I was passing by, I said, just asked her, how, how's the semester going? And she said, well, there's a lot of reading, but oh, it's so good. She said, I can't wait to actually over Christmas break, go back and reread some of the things that, that I've had to do for assignments. I really want to go back and, and, and read more carefully what I, what's there because there's just so much. So yeah, there is scholarship involved. Um, and so you should be prepared to do work. But at the same time, remember our desires also that it should be with the shepherd's heart. And I'll say two things about the shepherd's heart piece. Number one, we believe that uh, everyone who is a student should be in a mentoring relationship with somebody who is uh, uh, ahead of them, beyond them, more mature than them. Uh, and, and what we do is we don't require, we don't make me uh, mentoring mandatory. So it's not like you come here, you take your classes, and then you have to do mentoring. Instead, we believe it should be more organic and something that you're following through on because you see the wisdom of doing it and you desire to do it. So what we do is we... Uh, we offer mentoring with our residential faculty and with some of our staff as well. And that has turned out to be very successful. Uh, we desire to build a culture of mentoring so that when students come, they realize the value of this and, uh, and then they want to be part of it. And so they are. And so um, that's going, that's something that, again, is part of that shepherd's heart as we seek to invest in students. And then we also have something called the Ministry Apprenticeship Alliance otherwise known as the MAA, which I think we're going to have to change because people fairly frequently refer to it as the MMA, which is something entirely different. We don't do MMA. We do MAA. That's very, very different, just to make that entirely clear. Um, but uh, but the MAA, the Ministry Apprenticeship Alliance, uh, um, it, it's a, an opportunity for every student, if they desire, to uh, go to a church, to be a part of a church where the pastor at that church is working with Phoenix Seminary to teach the practical or some most of the pr practical disciplines in the curriculum in a church setting. So in other words, there's a if you're if you're learning, uh, for example, pastoral ministry and uh, and and you're thinking, well, I could learn in a classroom or I could go to a church where there's a pastor of who's been doing this for 15, 20, 25, 30 years teaching the class, and I'll be at the church there. And so some of my assignments will actually be engaged in that local congregation. Now, we have a number of churches that are doing this with us. And so we want to make sure that when you're learning those practical disciplines, you're learning them in the context of the church itself. Now, if you if you don't want to do that, if you prefer to be in the classroom or you just can't, um, especially if you're an online student, that could be a little more tricky, then then yes, we can we still offer those as as part of our curriculum that we cover. So don't worry, you don't have to be part of that. But if you do desire to be a part of that, 
that's something we want to help you so that, again, the scholarship and the shepherd's heart are going hand in hand. And then finally, why come to Phoenix Seminary? Faculty, curriculum, scholarship with a shepherd's heart. And then fourthly, place. Um, at Phoenix Seminary, two things are, are I think, great. Number one is uh, at least from October through April, May, you can't beat Phoenix. Uh, it is paradise. Uh, 75 degrees every day. It never rains. Always sunshine. Uh, you know, it's it's awesome. I, I, I myself still struggle a little bit with July and August. I'll be honest. Um, you know, 115 degrees. Not so much a fan, but... God's gift to us is air conditioning. And so that's a good thing. Um, but it is, it is that the city itself is fantastic in terms of all that it has to offer. It's like the third or fourth largest city in America. Uh, it's the fastest growing, uh, like, and I think because of the weather. So in terms of, of being in Phoenix, I think it's a, it's a great place to study. Um, and also <clears throat> just thinking about the place, if you, and I don't know where all of you are from, if you have the opportunity to take a class in person, then I would, even if you need to take some classes online, I would encourage you to think about how you can do that. Every single semester, we have students who are in our online program, which I'll talk about in a second, who actually leave the online only program and they come and be students. We've had students move from Montana to do this. This was a, a last year, I think. They realized how much they were missing by not actually being on campus. And so they moved from Montana to, to Arizona and they have loved that move ever since. It was exactly the right move. Being able to interact with fellow students, being able to interact with the faculty directly, being able to participate in the mentoring program, being able to participate in the Ministry Apprenticeship Alliance, uh, having the library there and all of its resources, the physical resources, as well as the electronic ones. Everything, it's just, it's a great opportunity. But I do understand that some of you may be in a position where you just can't do that. And so that's why we really have been working hard to uh, make the best online experience we can. We actually built out a studio and we do all the recordings in this studio that's actually purpose built. There are three cameras. One of them quietly moves along this little rail. And so all these different perspectives, we use a teleprompter so that when a professor is teaching you, that professor's eyes are always on the camera. And so we don't have what we like to affectionately call here is the Walmart security approach to uh, uh, to, to online. You know, the, we've all seen these sort of things where the camera's way in the back of the classroom and you can barely hear the speaker and it feels like you're sort of in this out-of-body experience. For us, there's a there's a desk, the camera's right there, pretty much like I am right now. And because we use a teleprompter to help faculty remember, they don't have to look at their notes. You're not seeing the top of their head all the time. They're engaging directly with you in those lectures. Um, so our online experience is also something that we've really tried to augment so that you get the most you can out of the uh, the classes that you're taking. So that's that's what I'd want to say to you. Why Phoenix uh, Seminary faculty curriculum, uh, scholarship with a shepherd's heart and and place just both on campus and online. So thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Hogg. That's um, really comprehensive. I feel like you said most everything that um, we probably normally say to people when we're trying to pitch Phoenix Seminary. So I guess it makes sense since you're our interim president, uh, you probably have those things locked and loaded. But uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hogg, for your time. Um, you are free to go get get back to your conference, get some lunch. We're really grateful that you took some time to join us today, and we will see you yep. in a couple of weeks. <laughs> all right. Great to see you all, or at least look at your names on the video. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Hogg. All right. Cheers. Bye. All right, everybody. So I am going to go ahead and take a little bit of time, talk through our programs and our financial aid. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to ask Mac to throw a couple links in the chat as I'm going so that if you want to save those for later, they're just links to our website. Uh, so places that you can go to look at the things that we talk about here. And then, um, then I will hand it over to Mac and he'll close us out. We're probably going to go another 20, 25 minutes. Um, if you need to leave this recording, this is being recorded, it will be sent out. So uh, thank you again for spending a little bit of time with us. I know we're getting close to the holidays, so it's it's not easy to make a time commitment like this, but we're really grateful you chose to. Uh, I will do a quick flyover of our programs. Um, the first one I want to talk about is our Master of Divinity program. This is our flagship degree. Uh, it's going to be the most 
robust, comprehensive degree that we have. It will go the most in-depth. You'll cover those four main things that Dr. Hogg mentioned, where uh, you're going to have the biblical studies, the theological studies, the historical studies, and the practical studies. Uh, so this program will cover all of that ground and will give you the most universal tools in your tool belt to use in various types of ministry uh, throughout your lifetime. So it's a four to six year program, depending on uh, how fast you're going, if you're coming in with credits, things like that. But this is really, this is the best we have to offer at the master's level. Um, beyond that, we have two Master of Arts programs that both make up about 50% of that Master of Divinity. We have the Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies, which, as it sounds, is um, covering the biblical and theological side of things, but also the historical studies side of things. It won't as much touch on the practical. So this is going to be a little bit more academic, not necessarily harder, but a little bit more academic focused than practical focused. Uh, this is going to be a two to four year program. And then the Master of Arts in Ministry is the other side of that coin. You're still going to do biblical and theological studies. We emphasize that in all of our programs. But instead of historical studies, this will focus on the practical studies. Uh, also two to four years. So these programs are only one credit difference. They're really about the same, uh, both about half of the MDiv and then can transfer into the Master of Divinity down the road if you decide you want to pursue further study. And I'll touch on our graduate diploma briefly. This is a certificate program taught at the graduate level. Uh, it's just a one to two year certificate. Uh, it's not an actual master's degree, but it is taught at that level. Fully transferable into our master's degrees, though. So uh, you could start with the graduate diploma, transfer it into either of the Master of Arts or the Master of Divinity. And we do have advanced degrees as well. We have a Master of Theology. So this is our terminal research degree. This is the farthest we go in research degrees. We don't offer a PhD, but the THM Master of Theology is a great stepping stone to the PhD. A lot of schools are starting to look for the THM as a minimum requirement. Um, they may still say a Master of Divinity is sufficient for a minimum requirement, but a lot of them are starting to look for the THM. Currently, we only offer a biblical studies emphasis, so it's very heavy in Greek and Hebrew studies, text critical studies. We are looking to open up potentially another one, hopefully in the next year. Uh, so hopefully more to come on that. But if you are interested in biblical and theological studies, this is a really great program. We also have a doctor of ministry program. So this is um, our only doctoral program that we offer. So versus the PhD, this is a practical uh, doctoral program but it's a doctoral research degree with the goal of resourcing the local church with a project specific to your context and the work that you have done in ministry to identify a need, do deep research and really helpful, thoughtful work that is then helpful to the local church wherever the local church may be. So really great program. Um, minimum requirement to apply is at least 48 credits of master's work in biblical and theological studies ideally a Master of Divinity. Uh, the next seminar is in January. It'll be January 8th through 12th. So if you are interested in the Doctor of Ministry program and you meet those requirements that I very quickly laid out, um, that's when the next seminar is. So connect with Mac or myself and we'll help you through that application process. That was a lot. That's our programs. That's everything that we offer program-wise. Mac threw some links in the chat for that. Uh, you can also send us an email to follow up if you have more questions. I will now jump to financial aid. Um, would love to spend a lot of time on this, but it's a lot of really technical information. So I'm gonna fly through it. Mac will post a couple more links, maybe just one um, on our financial aid. This is being recorded. So everything that I say, you can go back and listen to, and then um, you can also follow up with questions and we'll take care of it. So tuition is $550 per credit for the master's level. Uh, the doctoral tuition is 525. Uh, so all of our master's level classes are going to be three credits, which means each class is going to be $1,650. Uh, we have three main types of financial aid that I'm gonna talk about. We have application deadline scholarships, we have academic scholarships, and we have distinguished scholarships. So the application deadline scholarships are um, three deadlines or for the shorter programs. So the graduate diploma, master of theology, doctor of ministry, two deadlines. And each deadline has a set scholarship attached to it. If you meet this application deadline, you get that scholarship. 
Um, so for, um, let's just take the Master of Divinity program, since that's our flagship, we'll use that as our standard. The Master of Divinity has three deadlines. So we had the October 17th deadline to submit your application form for the spring. And then we have the next one coming up November 21st, which is to complete your application. And then we have December 12th to register for class for the spring. Um, if you're not starting this spring, there will be another set of deadlines for your semester whenever you do get started. But the October 17th deadline for the Master of Divinity had a $4,000 scholarship attached to it. So just for submitting your application form by that first date that we set, you would get $4,000 towards your Master of Divinity. And then the November 21st deadline coming up uh, next week has $2,000 attached to it for the Master of Divinity. And then the December 12th registration deadline has a $1,000 scholarship attached. If you make any of those deadlines, you get those scholarships. And then the scholarship is going to be applied $1,000 per semester. Uh, so for the Master of Divinity, if you get the full $7,000 available in these scholarships, that's your first seven semesters covered with a $1,000 scholarship. We also have an academic scholarship for all of our students taking two classes and maintaining a 2.5 or higher cumulative GPA, you get 30% off of tuition. So this is paired with our academic or our application deadline scholarships. So if you get the application deadline scholarships, that's $1,000 off of your semester and then 30% off of your remaining tuition. We also have distinguished scholarships. These are ones that our donors have provided. So our donors have set up these scholarship funds and they've outlined the requirements for the students applying for these scholarships. We do currently have the application open for the spring. So if you are looking to start this spring and you want to apply for these scholarships, that is on our financial aid page. So you'll scroll on the page until you see, I think it's a big blue box and it says distinguished scholarships. It has a list with drop downs of all of the available scholarships. You can read those descriptions, see if you meet any of those requirements. And then the very last drop down option in that list says application. So you'll click on that and it'll open up the form that you fill out really quick. Some of the uh, scholarships will have a more in-depth application if you submit the initial one, uh, but that is where you start. Then you just check the box for all of the scholarships you want that application to go to. If this scholarship that you get through the Distinguished Scholarship Program is a better deal for you than the application deadline and academic scholarship combined, you will just get that distinguished scholarship. There are going to be some on the distinguished scholarship list that are not going to be that helpful um, to replace the other scholarship opportunities. So it'll be indicated in the description of the scholarship that it can be combined with what you're already getting in that format. Uh, that was a lot. I'm just going to touch on two quick grants that we offer as well. Um, and then I'm going to hand it over to Mac. Uh, so we have the Church Partnership Grant. This is a program where uh, if you talk with your church and they agree to support you financially at any point during your program, uh, it's a semester by semester commitment. So if they agree to support you for a semester, we send a form to you. You have them fill out the form and on the form they will indicate how much they're going to contribute to your tuition. And then you give that form to us and we match their contribution for that semester. So uh, however much they give you, we'll come in and we'll match it. Uh, we have to cap our matching at 10% of your tuition for the semester, but we will go as far as we can with the matching and you'll still get their full gift. So um, this is a really great option and can be combined with our other scholarship opportunities as well. Um, and then we have one more. So for our married couples, um, we offer a partner in ministry grant so this is essentially a two for one or a two for 50% off, whatever you, however you want to think about that. If you are a registered enrolled student paying tuition or receiving scholarship, your spouse can come and take classes tuition free. So they can pursue a, their own degree. It can be the same one that you're pursuing. It can be different. They can audit classes. They don't have to take them for credit. Um, they can take different classes than you're taking. They're not restricted to only doing what you're doing. The only restriction we have is if whoever is using the grant cannot take more credits per semester than the primary student. That's it. Everything else is fair game. So it's a really great option for our married couples. The heart behind this, the reason we call it partner in ministry grant is we really do believe that if you are married 
and you are serving in ministry, you are serving together. Even if it's just one of you who's vocationally serving, you guys are supporting each other, working together in ministry. You are partners in that. And we want to train you both. <laughs> so if you are in that situation and your spouse would like to take classes, we do offer that grant. Um, that's all that I have for right now. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Mac. If you have more questions about that, you can email enrollment at ps.edu, or you can throw it in the chat sometime before the end of this meeting, and we will try to address it at the end. But I'm going to hand it over to Mac for a couple more things. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Haley. That was super great and informative. I'm just going to run through the application checklist for our different programs with y'all. And then we are going to talk a little bit about some of our upcoming deadlines that I want to reiterate and remind you of. And then we will announce uh, the winner of our giveaway, which is super exciting. Uh, so let's start with uh, our master's degree programs and our graduate diploma. Uh, basically, the MA programs that we've talked about and the Master Divinity as with, along with the Graduate Diploma is what we're about to talk about. Here is the checklist, the, the itemized list that you'd have to go through in order to complete an application for that. So it's gonna start with a quick application form. Some of you all have already done that and you know what that is. Uh, if you follow that link I threw in the chat, it's my most recent message that I sent in there. It'll basically be the first thing you do after you create an account. It's pretty quick. Uh, you could probably do it in one sitting. And then following that, we're going to be looking for a testimony. So that's going to be about 400 words or so, nothing too intense there. Uh, just a quick uh, testimony about how you came to Christ and what he's been doing in your life. And then following that, we'll be looking for uh, a couple recommendations, a pastoral recommendation or a personal recommendation. Typically, what we're looking for there is for the pastoral. Uh, if it's not your pastor, it'd be great if it is. If it's not your pastor, it can be someone who's known you at least a year, who's in a position of some kind of ministry leadership. Uh, in both cases, we would ask that they would have known you for at least a year. And then for the personal recommendation, um, we were looking for a similar thing. It could be anyone who's known you for at least a year and who isn't an immediate family member. I had someone send it to their dad a couple weeks ago. Super cool. Glad their dad loves them, but not what we're looking for. So uh, as long as it's not that, we should be good to go there. And then we will be looking for, if you've graduated from college, we will ask for official transcripts from your bachelor's degree. That's typically a pretty straightforward process. If there's any kinks within that, we will help you figure that out for sure. And then if you haven't graduate, had graduated from a bachelor's degree, as some of you may know, we do uh, accept applications from those who don't have a bachelor's degree. And typically what we'll do in that situation is instead of looking for official transcripts, we will instead email you an article for you to read and respond to. And the prompt and the instructions on how to respond will be in the email that we send. It's pretty straightforward. It's nothing super intense. Um, so that's what we'll do in lieu of the official transcripts. So that's for our master degrees and our graduate diploma. For those of y'all who already have an MDiv uh, or an advanced degree of some kind or interested in our upper level programs, we'll run through that quickly. So for the THM, we're going to be looking for that app form and testimony again, same as the others. Uh, this time we'll be looking for an academic recommendation and then a pastoral recommendation. So slight difference there. And then we'll look for official transcripts from your bachelor's and your MDiv program, which is pretty straightforward. And then we will also look for a writing sample as well. Uh, the director of our THM program, Dr. Mead, uh, will review those. And uh, he likes to kind of see and assess your academic preparedness. And so that's pretty straightforward. That's what the THM looks like. And the last one, our doctor of ministry. Again, we're going to start off with an app form and a testimony. And uh, just like before, the recommendations will look a little different. So we're going to be looking for a ministry colleague recommendation and also an employer recommendation. And then following that, just like the THM, we're going to do official transcripts for your bachelor's and your MDiv. And then we're also, the one thing that is different here is we'll also ask for a resume. So this will be kind of the first stage of the DMIN application. Uh, the DMIN application is a little bit longer. So if we get through that first stage and uh, everything seems good, it's looking good on our end, Dr. Tarr, the director of the program is liking what he's seeing, then we'll ask for a writing sample from you. Just like the non back article review, this is something that we'll send to you for you to respond to. So you'll respond to it and send it back to us and we'll have uh, Dr. Tarr review that. And then the last stage will be a sit down interview with Dr. Tarr that will obviously reach out and schedule with you um, 
So that's kind of the multi-step process of the DMEN program. And of course, we don't want you to forget, for those of y'all who are either starting an application or maybe haven't finished that app form yet, be sure to use the waiver code PS, capital P, capital S, 2023 in order to waive the application fee. Um, so that's application checklist and process. If you have more specific questions about that, obviously feel free to reach out to Haley, to me, or enrollment at ps.edu. We would love to answer any questions and help you out in any way that we can with that. So now we'll transition over to some deadlines for y'all to keep in mind. I did want to remind y'all of what Haley said about the application deadline scholarship. Super important. If you finish uh, your application, the rest of your application by November 21st, which is Tuesday, then uh, you get some money. We want to give you all the money. So uh, it will vary from program to program, as Haley mentioned, but keep that in mind. Uh, let us know how we can help you get across that finish line. For the last application scholarship deadline, just wanted to remind you, it's going to be December 12th. So November 21st, you turn in the rest of your application, and then you'll have until December 12th to register for classes. And if you do that, uh, then you'll get some more money. Yay, we love that. And uh, that'll round out that application deadline scholarship round. So again, please let us know how, when we get there, how we can serve you. We'd love to help you with that in any way that we can. I also wanted to mention uh, our spring semester starts on January 16th. So keep that in mind, that's the big day. It'll start that week. And uh, for those of y'all who are DMEN people, uh, the seminar, like Haley mentioned, will be January 8th through the 12th with a colloquium, colloquium on the 13th. So important dates, have that in mind if you're a DMEN person. And then the last, uh, the last one I wanted to announce is our new student orientation. This is going to be super exciting. We're super excited to host uh, the new students. We'll be doing an online um, online um, event for those who are unable to attend in person, and then we'll be doing an in-person event on campus as well. The online will be on January 11th, and then the in-person will be on January 13th. So keep that in mind. We would love to see you at either. We'd love to help you kind of make that transition from applicant to student. Uh, it can be, the onboarding process can be a little intimidating, but we're here for you at every step along the way to make that as smooth as possible for you. So I think that's all I have. I think we can move on to the winner of the giveaway. Super exciting. Uh, so the winner for today who won some cool stuff is, drum roll please, uh, Justin Gambrel. Justin, you won some cool stuff, man. Uh, Haley's going to connect with you, you after we get off. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Haley's going to connect with you after we get off here and kind of get some details from you, and we'll make sure to get that to you as soon as possible. Um, I think that's all I had, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Really appreciate y'all and your interest in Phoenix Seminary. Uh, make sure to see those links in the chat for any more information, and uh, definitely our email addresses as well. Please don't hesitate to reach out to Haley and I if you have any more questions. We'd love to help you in any way that we can. So yeah, I think we're, we're free to go. Thank y'all so much for joining.